hello guys uh, welcome back to my channel um once again um first of all i would like to apologize for people that actually uh got the notification about this new video in my channel uh and that actually that you tried to reproduce it or play it and the sound didn't come out uh which i wasn't aware of that until i I, I read a comment that it had nothing to do with the sound so I played I reproduced it and, I, and it was like muted and actually I'm really shocked and a bit frustrated to be honest because I don't know if you were able to see people who saw it it was a 40 minutes long video about two members of ATs because I wanted to save time and do a reading for these both uh, members because actually um, they were highly requested. Some of them were requested a long time ago. So um, I wanted to take the opportunity to make like a, a brief version, a brief reading, but to take both members into consideration because I will, I, I want uh, all of you to get your your bias reading and 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 at the same time I'm trying to be fair for people that had requested for other groups so let's be uh, respectful and kind please um, but here I am again I made myself some chamomile tea so I can calm myself a bit because I'm really frustrated at myself right now but I'm going to start all over and I cannot promise that I will do the same interpretation because never an interpretation is almost the same or or like identical to <laughs> to the one I recorded originally but I will try my best to, to try to give you all the insight that I got. So let's start with, um, I'm, as you can see in the picture, this reading is going to be for 80s Jongo and Juno. So I placed uh, Jongo's reading on the left and Juno's uh, reading, Juno's spread on the right of the screen. So you can see both of them, which this actually, this format was really helpful because it allowed me to see um, the differences and and you know that's really interesting when you read for two people uh, very different people but you put their the cars very close to each other so you can definitely see like the the, the change in their in their uh, energy um, of course we know that uh, Jonko uh, it's uh, it's a Libra and uh, Juno is an Aries, uh, but I was thinking that um, because I was uh, looking at this spread and I was like, mm, this gives me a lot about their Venus placements. Um, so I don't know if you uh, remember, but um, actually, um, uh, John Ho's um, uh, Venus is in Scorpio also his Mercury and in the case of uh, Juno he has Venus in Taurus so I, it was really interesting to see it expressed here but I will explain why so let's start with Jongho um, Jongho got the archetype of the mentor the detective the addict and the liberator so I think that it's really interesting uh, when we are starting with the archetype of the mentor. The mentor because um, some people uh, like tend to confuse the mentor archetype with the professor or probably with some kind of teacher. Uh, and actually being a mentor is like a much deeper role. And I believe that when you have it in your... In, in what you find ideal romantically, I think that it has to do with him actually trying to learn something from, from, from his ideal partner, you know, from this relationship that he can come out of this relationship feeling wiser and feeling like 
thanks to this person's uh, existence in his life, that he can learn, that he can absorb other points of view, other experiences, other way of feeling, way of expressing. I think that and it makes sense that actually he does uh, look for this because he is a Libra. So I think that probably for him, relationships are, are important. Relationships build him as a person and probably like teaches him a lot about himself and a lot about about who he really is inside so but if we think that he is a Venus in a Scorpio you know Venus in a Scorpio has uh, a lot of challenges to face like all Scorpio placements because it's like we cannot leave things in a surface or superficial level it always goes has to go deep you know to dig into the energy so him being a Venus in Scorpio definitely makes sense especially the next archetype is the archetype of a detective so I think that in this case uh, he wants someone that can be really observant and intuitive enough to actually uh, realize a few things about uh, the relationship and also the relationship with others. I think that um, here the detective, I can feel that probably what what Joho is it's needing is someone to be like an eye opener for him, you know, probably someone that can like uh, make him realize or help him to get to a certain realization or to a certain level of awareness about something that probably he's not been able to get in contact with his intuition himself and he needs the the connection with this ideal partner to get closer to that information. I think that this is interesting but I think that I also have the feeling that Jonho is really intelligent and he's really perceptive as well. It's just that I think that for him it would be like easier to connect with his detective self if he has like a partner that can like um, initiate this kind of observations you know I think that he is very perceptive that he is like he knows because you know he works in a, in, in a industry where there's a lot of fake people there's a lot of fakeness there's a lot of uh, like uh, people with hidden agendas probably he does feel feel it in an energetically way you know that he he knows that not all people he can trust but I think that he would take his perception seriously if he had his partner to confirm this for him. You know, probably like almost like a spiritual guidance, you know, like someone to be like, mm, you know, I don't like you talking to that person because I don't like the way that person spoke to you or the way they behave around you, you know. And he would be like, and thanks to this um detective skills of his partner or probably like uh, this kind of suspicious behavior um, he would be able to connect with his own intuition with his own uh, suspicion and be like oh yes I was thinking about that too uh, which is interesting that he needs he needs someone else to kind of like make it obvious for him because probably he doesn't truly trust himself yet. He doesn't trust his instincts. He doesn't trust himself yet. So probably he wants his partner to be like um, more clever, you know, like in that sense and, and more um, intuitive probably. Um, but probably he's surrounded by a lot of shady people. This is why I think that he needs to have a partner that can like, it's sort of like, uh, like, you know, like warm him, you know, like don't trust these, these people, don't talk to these people, someone like that. So this is what I feel like almost like an, ad an advisor, someone like that. Uh, and also we have here the addict and the liberator. So the addict, again, I think that the addict and the liberator are also 
what I'm feeling here is that definitely he, what he wants or what he finds ideal in someone or what he wants in his romantic partner, ideal romantic partner, is someone that can be able to put some boundaries in the relationship. And at the same time, some boundaries when it comes to um, his relationships. Like, I don't know if maybe it has to do that that uh, John Ho actually uh, is uh, has like some issues regarding to saying no to people or like setting healthy boundaries and being like, oh, I don't want to do this or look, look, I don't have time to do this. It's like it seems like he needs his partners to to put the limits themselves in the relationship, you know, to be the one that is like tells him what to do or what to say because here with the addict definitely I can see that again this has to do with um, like this person being like okay for, for example if Jungho is working late or if he is like obsessing over finishing a project or over helping other member or about like perfection in some things about his job you know and he is like working non-stop i think that the addict archetype is someone that would be like okay like you need to come home earlier or you need to stop bringing work at home or you need to stop thinking about work when you are with me you know someone that can like put some kind of boundaries and some kind of limits to how much he gives to the external world you know how much how much of him of himself he invests invests in his public image or in his public persona or his famous status or celebrity status he wants an ideal that is like okay you are with me right now so in this relationship I don't know, I will not tolerate that you act like a diva. I don't know. Or like you talk to me the way you talk to the staff members, for example, you know. Someone that puts like some, a lot of like conditions, you know, like, oh, yes, if you want to be in a relationship with me, you need to stop behaving this way. You know, someone very, almost like very de determined and very like straightforward about things that they will not put up with, you know. And I think that there's a reason why he find, he wants this to be ideal. Probably it's because uh, either he, f he feels like he lacks this kind of behavior in, his, in himself and in his life, and he somehow wants someone that can be a bit more brave and a bit more courageous someone that can like be honest and straightforward with him about what they want uh, from the relationship and from him I think he wants someone that can be like this brutally honest you know in the sense that they can really like call him out you know and be like oh I, I want this from you I don't want this from you like and I think that there's something about him probably not having like a lot of a structure when it comes to his interaction with others. Probably this has to do with being like a people pleaser. Probably he does say a lot, say yes to a lot of, uh, to helping people, you know, to be there for people, to do things for others that probably inside he feels a bit uncomfortable, you know, he's like, oh, I don't have time for myself. So I think that he would use this person as an excuse, but this person is also a manifestation of everything that he cannot say himself, you know, like a reflection, like a projection of everything that he's not. So probably, I don't know, you see here the the less archetype is the archetype of the liberator so definitely what is showing me here with the liberator card is that definitely um he wants this person to come into his life to liberate him from something 
you know, from all patterns, probably he he realizes that he is not that strong willed when it comes to his loved ones. Probably he is very weak or he is like it's like he's the kind of person that always says yes to his loved ones, you know. So sometimes probably he doesn't know how to set healthy boundaries. This is why having a partner that can be like very logical, very straightforward about what they like and about what they don't like. And someone that comes to put some kind of order. And at the same time, that can set him free from other people's expectations about John Ho. You know, I think that in, in at the beginning it would be really awkward, uh, at least for the other person, because I don't think that the other person will realize it. But uh, John Ho, for example, would be the kind of person that he would be like, oh yes, I cannot go to to that party or I cannot do this because my partner doesn't want me to. Something like that, you know, a bit manipulative, yes, to put the to to put the, the 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 partner as an excuse, you know, but he would make it because it's easier to say, oh no, my, my partner doesn't like this, so I will not do it, than actually to connect with his own decision and be like, oh I don't want to do this. Like I think that he is very uh, he's very loyal to his people. He's very loyal, and I think that even though he can he can be moody, he can have his temper, obviously, like we all do. I think that sometimes he does struggle to to say no, you know, and probably he he can complain, but at the end he's always there to help others. But at the same time, I think that uh, sometimes people can be a bit overbearing with him, you know, like like. Um, stepping on his boundaries, you know, like being noisy and like like uh, being manipulative with him as well. So I think that this, this kind of person, this liberator, this detective, this mentor is going to be someone with a strong personality that is going to somehow like coach him about how to be brave and about how to say no, you know, about that uh, and, and also about calling him out on a lot of his behaviors, you know, being like, okay, I want you to treat me this way, I don't like this, you know, someone very honest. And, and I think that the communication will be the key here. Then the card that came out from the Oracle of Romantic Angels, the card that came out is keep your mind open, so, or keep an open mind. Uh, so... I think that this oracle is very meaningful as well because I think that this is talking to me about he, him possibly meeting this person and like having like a like a very not uh, positive first impression of this person, you know, being like, oh, I don't like that person or I don't like the way they talk. I don't like how she, how she behaves, I don't like the way, the, the tone of her voice, she sounds very bossy, or she sounds very loud, I don't like her, she sounds rude, you know, uh, I think that he needs to keep an open mind, because behind all those preconceptions is actually his ideal person, so I think that at the end, probably he will be a bit hesitant about meeting this person and about this person could potentially become his love interest, you know. So I think that the oracle here, it's very blunt also and is very like direct in his message. is telling him to keep his mind open because actually probably his uh, ideal romantic partner is very close to coming into his life and that he needs to to not be judgy you know just uh just um see beyond and give this person a chance you know probably this person is not who he would normally feel attracted to but i think that this person has the potential to transform his life for good. So yes, probably their their first encounter or something is going to be a bit chaotic, and probably you know he he is a diplomat also at heart. So maybe he at first he will not feel uh, really comfortable about this person's behavior, but then if he starts paying attention and if he allows himself to 
to to connect with with this person and start talking he will realize that this person is ideal so yes this is all i have for joko i hope that you enjoyed it so let's move on to juno's reading so with juno like i was mentioning he is an aries and his venus uh, his moon is in gemini and his venus is in taurus so when I first laid these cards for Juno's reading, Juno's, Juno is my bias, so I'm really happy to read for him. Um, actually, I was like, uh, I was like, this is very Venus in Taurus. <laughs> this is, look, I'm going to explain to you why. The first card, it's um, Goddess. The second card is Pioneer, the third card is Dilettant, and the other card is Queen. So definitely what I can see here, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I see female energy here. Like, I'm sorry if people have not been homophobic. I'm, you know, I read energies, but I can tell you that I feel very strong feminine energy so i i have to express it the way i see it um starting off with the goddess archetype definitely it's and i think that i i have talked some about this uh in a reading about uh juno i do not remember which one but there's something about Juno and actually it can be his Venus in Taurus because it's ex exalted in Taurus. You know, he is attracted to beautiful people and, and to what he considers beautiful. And I think here that starting with, with the goddess archetype, definitely he is the kind of person, he is the kind of male that actually he feels really attracted to physical beauty. So probably he is the kind of person that he he could um, like um, he could like fall in love at first sight. He could have these moments of uh, feeling really infatuated by someone that he just first met, you know. Because I think that he's a very visual person. He is someone that if he sees uh, something beautiful, he will like. Uh, pursue it you know I think that and also he's very brave and I think that he is uh, when it comes to his taste I think that he's very honest because I can see it here well he's an Aries so I definitely see that if he ever meets this person he would probably marry this person because I see him like like whenever he if he meets someone with these qualities he will definitely like or make a move and he will definitely try to his best to conquer this person so um and and i'm saying this about about the visual thing because uh almost all his cards are especially the four of them the two of them are about uh beauty and are about uh glamour and about like uh a good a good self-image and you taking care of your looks and you feeling comfortable in your skin and you having like a very high um how high perception about uh, how you look or probably like being very confident about uh your appearance and about your persona so i think that he definitely uh, i think that he also is it's not only about physical physicality i think that it also has to do with with the attitude uh and i'm getting a lot of foreigner kind of um um influence here like um it, it's not um I, I know that that korean have their uh, uh korean females they do f they do have an attitude and they have like a like a strong personalities but i think that what i'm seeing here in this female is uh, because if I mix the goddess with the queen archetype, I sense a lot of movement, a lot of like a lot of spontaneity in in her move, and I see her like very, uh, very confident, very comfortable talking to strangers, very with a bright smile, 
very maybe a bit flirtatious at the same time but funny really funny a bit loud yes um, but very confident very gracious very independent and also very like um like really um um very comfortable in her skin you know very confident so i don't know why i'm i'm getting like this could be a foreigner i don't know why um but because of of the there's something about her mannerism or there's something about the way she behaves in public that it's very um it's it's very fresh i don't know how to explain it there's not much formalities or anything she just flows with who she is like a lot of spontaneity um so and then we have the 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 other two archetypes that talk to me about uh, the intellect intellectual side um and this is the pioneer and the dilettante I think that these two, and also the fact that these two cards are color green, I'm sorry, are color yellow, um, they talk about this mercurial element. Uh, starting with the pioneer, definitely he wants like someone that thinks outside of the box, you know, he wants to have really ex stimulating and very uh, intelligent conversations. Uh, this is why I, I think that if this person is not a foreigner, probably this person was raised in other country or was like, or had visit in their, in her life, she had visited other and lived with other people from different races and from different uh, uh, backgrounds and cultures, because I can see her like herself, like being able to be this pioneer because she had been traveling a lot or she had been like having she had the the the, the lack the opportunity to actually uh get to know a lot of things outside of of her country and outside of her uh of her hometown you know i see her like or someone very studious you know someone very um very very intelligent someone that is always like an eternal apprentice, you know, always learning a new skill, learning or uh, reading a lot of books, learning new languages, you know, someone very intelligent. So um, very ideal, actually. Um, and then with the dilettante, the dilettante, it's also is the dilettante is the card of the multitasker, you know, someone that is good at doing a lot of activities at once and probably it's not someone that uh, specializes into one subject. No, he's, uh, this person just like uh, moves on from, from knowledge to different knowledge, you know, uh, and is uh, it's always like looking for new adventures or new um, technologies, for example, new ways of learning. Um, I think that this is very, very, very interesting. Um, in the case in the case of Juno, I think that um, and also is really honest. I can really connect with his with his uh, ideal, what he finds ideal, because I think that when he shows me that his ideal uh, type is someone beautiful. Um, actually, I feel like like it's it's really um it's really honest from from himself or from his uh, energetic field to be really aware that he does appreciate beauty and that and i think that um there's something about um this is why the goddess and the queen are here together because if you mix the goddess with the queen is no um um, like um, regular person in the sense that uh, you know that uh, Juno obviously he, because of his profession and because of uh, what he does for a living he's surrounded by beautiful people all day long so probably he had dated beautiful or probably he had met beautiful females before um, I, I don't think he has like trouble like actually having a girlfriend or something like that 
which I do not know because I cannot see it here. But from what I can say is that it's normal for him to have like this strong desire to actually his ideals, ideal type to be someone stunning, you know, someone that, that is so beautiful that, that it hurts, it hurts your eyes to look at her. Um, and, um, and I think that if we mix the goddess with the queen, what I was saying is that, you know, the queen has some kind of a status. The queen has an archetype, it's no commoner, you know, and I think that this has to do with this person having like some kind of competitiveness uh, in them because I think that he obviously has like a lot of options. So probably um, he just, it's not that he just wants like the prettiest of the prettiest just because. I think that he wants this person to have something that the others don't have. And this person to be also very comfortable in themselves and being like, okay, yes, I know I'm the best for you. Or I know uh, I'm better than all the people you had met before. You know, someone that has a bit of a pride, you know, someone a bit prideful. So, yes, it's it's interesting actually how he he he's showing me uh, this, that... Um, that you know beauty he 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 lives with beauty every day you know he is it, it's, it's like he just wants that kind of of beauty that is not just shallow beauty you know he wants something deeper he just doesn't know how to because i think that he's also very he's a very spontaneous lover so i think that for him to actually recognize if he's attracted to someone or not he probably is very like enthusiastic whenever he's attracted to someone or probably he, i i think that he's the kind of person that if he's attracted to someone he cannot lie probably his uh his mannerisms his his behavior the way he stares at you he will let you know that he's interested probably he doesn't know how to lie or to or to hide or to be mysterious um but um nevertheless he wants someone that it's it's different you know someone that can have this kind of uh, attitude and this pride also about themselves you know about Yes, I'm beautiful, but I also have different values and I have like a very strong personality and that uh, when I open my mouth, I'm intelligent, you know, like a whole package. I think that he, he has like high standards and I like it. I like that I can see it because, you know, here we are talking about our ideals. So definitely if it's his ideals, we have to embrace it the way it is. And then uh, the card of the Romantic Angels Oracle, it's the card of uh, deceived, um, of deceitfulness um, or, um, or cheat. I don't know how to explain it. And actually, this is the first time I got this card from this Oracle for an idol. And I think that it's a very strong message actually for him. There's something about um, deceitfulness. There's something about being lied to. There's something about being cheated, cheated on. Um, you know, when I was uh, watching this uh, this uh, oracle card, you know, one of them uh, is wearing a mask. So probably what he's telling me here is that things are not what they seem. And that probably him in this process of trying to find someone that carries this kind of beauty, physical beauty, or that has this very like um, kind of queen behavior, you know, this very majestic personality, aura, or uh, magnetism. Probably what he's showing me here is that he needs to be careful about what he finds ideal or actually uh, who he falls in love with. You know, I think that this card uh, that talks about being deceived or being, being, uh, being, being 
cheated on definitely is like some kind of warning for him you know that definitely um, he shouldn't be let himself being blinded or being um, like um, um, entertained or like he shouldn't let other people's appearance or probably uh, beauty to distract him from what's real. I don't know if maybe he had already gone through this or he's about to, but I think that the Oracle is delivering a very strong message here. And is that he needs to be careful about who he associates himself with, especially when it comes to romance. Because I think that these persons or these female or these these people's beauty or these people's um, um, physical attributes that can actually um, make him feel really attracted can actually turn out to be uh, very negative for him in the sense of at the end, I don't know, finding out that he had been cheated on or that this person had been lying to him or that this, this person had been, I don't know, living a double life, you know, because here in this card, we have the message of be careful because things are not the way it seems, you know, and and you have this person like um, wearing a mask so definitely what is telling me here is that he should be careful about his tendency of liking pretty faces or pretty people that he is not paying attention to what lies underneath and that uh you know i i think i mentioned this uh actually uh, I'm on the, when I started the reading, that he is, uh, sometimes he is a bit naive. Uh, there's something about, I think that he also is very childlike um, in, in the sense that probably when he's fascinated by someone, he just doesn't listen. It's like his whole um, senses become like numb you know he just knows that he's in love or he just knows that he's starting to feel something so whenever he's connected to this feeling of feeling passionate about someone you know he just doesn't listen he doesn't see straight you know he just starts like fantasizing about this person being the one and actually he's not able to see the red flags so I think that the, this, uh, this oracle is like giving him this sign that he should be careful like about these people that are, that seem to be like they are perfect, you know, like they are beautiful, they are smart, they're, you know, like because we all have flaws, we all have, um, and especially I think that it also has to do with uh with the industry that he's in probably there's a lot of i don't know gold diggers or something like that you know and probably at the same time um there's a lot of people you know that it had happened that uh recently there's always like someone an ex friend an ex girlfriend an ex of whatever uh that that just uh, is full of resentment and suddenly, uh, um, you know, reveals something very personal about their relationship and then they end up ruining his career, you know. So I think that in this sense, he also needs to be careful about who he trusts, you know, about not letting himself just fall for a pretty face or for someone beautiful and not seeing that person true true intentions you know so yes guys i'm going to leave it here i hope that you enjoyed it and please um next time if you see that the audio is not working please can you give me a heads up so i can fix it if i can so i hope that you enjoyed it and please don't forget to give it a like and leave uh, leave in the comments your feedback how do you feel about this reading if you liked it if you enjoyed it i would love to hear from it so thank you so much uh, i'll see you in the next video bye